Hi guys, what's going on? Blue Moon Soon here. Now, uh, first thing I want to say is sorry I didn't get this video out yesterday. There were a couple of reasons why. First of all, uh, where I live there was unbelievably bad weather and the internet was just inconsistent all day. One minute it would be up, next minute it would be down, it would be unbelievably slow and uh, it took about I think half an hour, 30 minutes to uh, load a web page at one point. So uh, I couldn't record any gameplay and in general um, you know, if even if I tried to upload, it would have taken longer uh, than I think my channel's been up. So um, there wasn't really too much point in trying because the video would be up by next week. Um, but I did manage to give it a good bad for you guys today. A little bit late again. Uh, a few still some problems lingering, but hopefully the video is working fine. Today's video is, of course, an episode of Weapon Weekly. Um, in this show, I go over, you know, a good weapon I've used, the weapon I've used most over the past week, and I give you guys some general tips on it. And this week's weapon is, in fact, the MTAR-21. Now, I did realize when I'm recording this that uh, for the last three episodes of um, videos I've done with guns in uh, Weapon Weekly and Lowdown, and now this one, I have in fact done bullpup weapons. Now again, bullpup means the magazine is in the back. I did the Org A3 first, which is a bullpup assault rifle, the QBU-88, which is a bullpup DMR, uh, and of course most recently the MTOR-21, or the Ta um, Tavo, Tavo, I believe it is, 21 in real life. And of course that's a bullpup um, carbine or PDW in real life again. In fact, the fact that this is a carbine in Battlefield 4 is something I want to talk about, because it's something that kind of bugs me. For me, a carbine is something that's an assault rifle, but a little bit quicker and a little bit more singular purpose. While an assault rifle is designed to be all round good, a, car a carbine is designed to be something that is more of a civilian use, so it's not as powerful as an assault rifle. So it's a little bit confusing that they put this small bullpup rifle that's only like and, and as long as somebody's arm it's a very very small weapon but they put it in the carbines class which is a very weird pick for me this weapon is more like a PDW in its stats with 900 rounds per minute um, it is a very very fast firing weapon that is unbelievably that is in PDW uh, rate of fire area just here you can see I'm trying out a scope on it the scope doesn't really work it does take a lot of the screen um, but that's what PDWs do, they don't work with scopes. Uh, I can't emphasize too much how much this weapon is a PDW and not a carbine. But either way, before I rant on too long, um, I think the reason I've ended up picking three uh, bullpup weapons is because I very much like them and I think they're very cool weapons. It's just when I'm playing the game, I'll go up, I'll look for weapons to do and I go, ah, that looks cool and um, I use it, or you know. It's just inside of the childish nature for me. Bullpups in general, like I said, look cooler to me, and I think I'm just drawn to them by little factor. I don't really think they have too much of an effect on uh, how I play and if they work in my playstyle, because the three weapons I have chosen to do in the last couple of episodes have been very different type of weapons, so there isn't really too much of a link there. But either way, let's get into the stats. So first of all, this weapon isn't very good at range at all. That is kind of expected from a weapon like this. That it should be a PDW again. But I won't go too on to I won't go on too long about that. Uh, the reload time is a little bit weird. It's 2.4 with bullets left, which is uh, sort of below average. Uh, in fact, very below average. And then it's three seconds exactly when the magazine is empty. Now again, that's sort of an average one, a little bit below average, and uh, that's something that's not really going to catch you out. Um, but it can easily. There are a lot of times playing this game where the PDW's 900 rounds would just burn through the ammo and I'd suddenly have no rounds left at all, at which point I need to reload, but of course the reloads are quite slow, so I die because I don't have any bullets to shoot back with. The damage of this weapon is really the standard carbine stuff, 24 uh, maximum and 15.4 minimum. That was, don't, that was, remember, patched, it was before 25, and I believe 16, um, if not a little bit higher than that, or even a little bit lower. But that isn't really too much of a bad problem. I've explained before why it was changed, so I won't go into it again. Every carbine except the Ace 52 does this 24 to 15.4 damage. The Ace 52, in fact, does, I believe, 33 to something like 18, which is actually very good, but the Ace 52 has a very large round it shoots. 
Now the recoil is very low and very controllable. Uh, it does have an only a 31 round magazine, so um, you know again I said before the extremely fast rate of fire. You can easily burn out bullets, but if you're accurate and you can keep your target on center, you will get quite a bit of kills. The hip fire isn't very good. Um, it's kind of surprising to me because. As I said before, ball pups are designed to be very pointable and very close quarters. This is the first close quarters ball pup I have used out of the three I've done. But either way, um, it's surprising to me that the hip fire is actually surprisingly bad. I was easily shot out sometimes in close quarters, so I tried to aim down sights as much as possible. And you can see that it did actually work pretty effectively for most of the time. Now, if looking at the stats of this weapon, you'd say it's pretty average, good close scores weapon that doesn't really have too much of an advantage. But in fact, you are very wrong. This weapon is an absolute beast in close quarters. You will win almost all of the gunfights you get into. And if you don't, that's because you're doing something wrong or they had a drop on you. So almost all the time you will win. This weapon, like I said, is unbelievably dominant. The only thing that lets it down is the hip fire. So it is maybe worth running an ergo grip or possibly uh, a laser sight. But honestly, I've, I've not using laser sights much more because they give away my position if somebody's quick enough to notice them. And there were just better attachments out there. So I've started to use the new target indicator. But just here you can see me using this little attachment that is in fact the bipod. Now I was very confused when I was unlocked the bipod of this weapon because it's a small little weapon. Like I said, it's probably no longer than somebody's arm. So why does it have a bipod? This is in fact a shorter version of the bipod. Um, but if you get a full size one, I'm pretty sure it's as long as the weapon is, which is pretty weird that um, it has a bipod for it. I don't really see what they were thinking uh, when they applied that. They should maybe thought of it a little bit better and made it something different. But either way, that did actually help me to understand something. Even without a grip, this weapon does actually have pretty controllable recoil. You know, you don't really need a grip to help you all too much. You can just as easily go up and use it without it. This weapon is very good at hitting its targets if you are very good at hitting your targets as well. It definitely works with my kind of playstyle. In fact, I used it a lot in close quarters because that's what it's best at. You can't really judge me for using a weapon at what it is best. This weapon is actually extremely fun to use. I'm definitely using it more. I haven't used it too much, but I have started to use it a little bit more often, especially after this video. Now to finish up, the uh, setup that I found best in the end was the red dot sight, which is uh, honestly not really required. The iron sights are very good, but they do let you down sometimes because they do cover up much of the screen. So I did decide to go for the red dot just out of versatility. Target indicator, like I said, it's a new equipment, but it is actually very good to use. A suppressor, which helped a lot. A uh, stubby grip. And, like I said, I did try the bipod once or twice, you saw the clips. But it was just completely pointless. I'm not sure why I really used it. So that's all today, guys. Thanks for watching. I was Boom Monsoon, and I'll see you next time, guys. It's Boom Monsoon, out.